Hello. Um, hi, Azzy. Uh, good, good afternoon. Thank you for the intro. Um, we're delighted to be here at this conference. Uh, we came from the United States. Um, so I'm going to be teaching, like you said, uh, teaching GIS through geospatially aware agent-based modeling. Um, this work is done on, in part by uh, my, my team and me, uh, SimTable and Redfish Group. Uh, Redfish Group is a, is a complexity research organization out of uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, and we, we mostly study ecological issues through a, through a complexity lens. So let's see. Um, so um, our, our main product is this augmented reality sand table that's on the right. And um, this table on the left is the precursor. It's what um, wildland firefighters have been using to train for, for years. Uh, you can see these like yarn, this yarn represents different fire lines and then you can see uh, like a little a tractor there that they use to fight this fake fire. So we built an augmented reality version of this. Um, the, jo the joke around the office is that this table on the left is a multi-threaded interactive sand table and this one on the right is just a computer program. Um, can you spot the garbage collection on the left? There we go. Uh, that was my joke. Um, so, like I said, we use we our primary focus is on um, wildland firefighting. What we have up here on the left is a tactical decision game uh, done by firefighters. So, they stand around a table and they play this game where they fight a virtual fire, um, and then. Over here, we got some, some, some firefighters who are training to go to a, like a community and teach the community about uh, the dangers of a fire. Uh, here's a, another game. And then here's, uh, we're, we're teaching uh, students using this table. Uh, why is wildland fire important? Um, so on the way here, Kaz took a picture of some fire from in Rome around Rome from the train. So it's a big issue. It's becoming more of an issue. We don't have to get into why. Uh, so here's, here's an example of some agent-based models on a slippy map. So this is leaflet. Um, you can see up here in the corner, we've got like a, a wind dial, which is blowing this fire to the east. So this, this model takes into account uh, fuel, elevation and wind. Um, this model on the right is, uh, is a smoke model which just takes into account uh, one wind direction and uh, some uh, topography. Um, what we have here is another agent-based model which is more of what you'd think of classically as an agent-based model. These are these little dots moving around are considered are like automobiles um, and they're evacuating these two polygons so if you can see these purple dots are kind of going south these red dots are going north so that's like a more classic agent-based model um, then on the right we have like a little flood of a, of a canyon area uh, so our motivations um, So um, our motivations for uh, doing this work is uh, we, we like to visualize and communicate natural phenomenon to stakeholders like um, students and firefighters. Um, we, we need a, a model, a development platform that's like, we like to say low threshold, easy to use, high ceiling, it needs to be open source and um, easy to use and deploy. And it's nice if it incorporates GIS Let me see. I think I might have skipped a slide. So um, I guess I'm going to give you a little background on agent-based modeling. Is anybody familiar with agent-based modeling? OK. So um, this is not going to be new to you. Uh, but 
most, the most common uh, or well-known software for agent-based model is Star Logo or NetLogo, and those are still active um, projects. I think Star Logo might, I think it may be there, I don't know. Um, so it's different than a lot of other modeling in that you model in terms of agents and their interactions rather than like a, I don't know, differential equation or something like that. And it, it's good for modeling emergent phenomenon and, um, yeah, and nonlinear interactions. But what we have here on the right is like a, a flocking model, like a bird or fish flocking model. Uh, so that model is done with like two very simple rules. And even like a, a young student could write this model. It's like a, those, those little dots have a, a little sphere where they avoid other dots, and then they also have a sphere where they align and point the same direction as the other. They're called turtles, but I called them dots. Um, I'll get into that. So uh, these are the primitives of agent-based modeling. Um, we have turtles, which are these in blue here. So they're little things that can move around in the world. They have a position, sometimes velocity, stuff like that. There's links, they connect two turtles. So there's uh, those two things together in the GIS world, I guess you could consider a vector. It'd be like a point in a line or maybe a polygon. And then you have patches, which are the raster underneath. So that's in gray, and that's just uh, a raster. It's just a, you can have multiple values per patch, but it's, uh, it's basically a raster. So here's another example of a fire model, which is kind of the basis for our fire, fire model. It's, uh, but this one's really simple. You kind of have a random assortment of trees in this forest, and you have some probability that this fire, which originates on the left-hand side, is going to light, light its neighbor's uh, trees on fire. And that creates this kind of uh, fractal burn pattern, which um, is, is nice. That's what, in a real fire, that's what firefighters like to see. It kind of means that the fire is low intensity, and it's not like torching the soil, it's not burning all the trees, it's, it's leaving pockets of old, old growth mixed in with uh, stuff that can come back. So that, uh, that's just an example of a, of a pretty easy to write model that, um, that has some cool interactions. Uh, here's another model. It's a, uh, an evacuation model. So those, those little guys moving going towards the exits, those are the turtles. They're uh, kind of just flooding towards an exit. This is an interesting model because it actually does pretty well in real life because um, people are more likely to leave through the same entrance they came in. So it actually it works pretty good. Um, here's that same model on a digital elevation grid. So they, it's a, maybe it's a little bit tweaked, this model, compared to it, but um, there's also a lot more agents. So uh, it's basically the same model. They're flooding out of these gates. So what's interesting about this, mo this um, particular model is that it was used to convince the city of Santa Fe that they needed to enlarge these um, bridges. So there's like some exits here and they were slowing down the uh, people leaving this field after what's called Zozobra. It's like a celebration in Santa Fe. I don't know if anybody knows about it. Um, so I'm gonna, I guess now I'm gonna talk about the different software that's available for agent-based modeling with GIS. So there's, uh, there's quite a bit, this isn't a complete list, but these are the ones that kind of support GIS natively. Um, most of them are in Java. Uh, yeah, some of them are proprietary. Um, the most, the most net logo is definitely, I think, the most popular. It's, uh, it has a web-based version and a Java version. And the Java version supports GIS, the web version doesn't. I'm gonna be talking about uh, AgentScript, which is like our own product that has come out of our company. And it's, uh, it's JavaScript, it's open source. Uh, you, can, uh, you can get to it at agentscript.org. 
I don't think I included a link on the slides, but it's agentscript.org. Uh, OK, agents. So it's uh, web browser based. It has some GIS. We would like to include more, which is part of the reason we're here is to get some information on what people are doing as far as GIS. But uh, OK, here's the main. This is uh, the main author. So he's, his name's Owen Densmore. He's got a passion for programming. Um, he's that guy in, in the yellow circle. And this is the, the original Apple team. So Owen speaks Italian, would like to have been here, but he couldn't make it today because it's, it's a long way away. Um, okay. Here's a couple of examples of models from our models library. Um, this one up here, that's the flocking model I showed you earlier. Uh, this one to the right is a pretty neat. It's an ants model. So these are, uh, one of these is a nest. One of these is food. And there's like these, uh, these kind of yellow and blue things are pheromone fields. So um, it kind of shows these, uh, how these random assortment of ants that are wandering around can form like a path between the food and the nest. It's, here we go, it's starting. Yeah. So they just kind of wander around, they find food, and they just kind of wander around and they kind of follow this pheromone field back to the nest. And eventually, the field becomes strong enough that they go straight to the food and straight back. Which, I, I'm not sure if that is really accurate to how ants work, but it's a cool model. <laughs> um, let's see, the, these are like slime molds, I'm not, Real, I don't know much about those ones. This is just a, uh, what do you call it? Shallow model, shallow water model equation. So it's like a very simple um, patch-based model. It kind of does waves. And uh, here's a, this mostly shows the view, the 3D view. And uh, here's another 3D view. And then up here is a view that is on a leaflet map. So. It's pretty easy in, in, agent, base, in uh, agent Script to go from these 2D models to a 3D view and also to a leaflet map view. So I'm going to do a little tutorial real quick, just uh, how to start, how to do an agent script model. So first I'm starting with a, a really simple um, like framework, uh, what do you call it, skeleton. So none of these functions are filled in, but I'm gonna fill them in. And missing is a, a draw function, which I didn't get in the screenshot. But first we fill in this startup function, which pulls in some uh, elevation data, it, and then it puts the aspect, the slope, and the elevation into uh, patch variables. So now every patch will have an aspect, slope, and an elevation. Um, so that's, that's the setup. Uh, then I'm going to do a draw. So now we're, we're going to draw the aspect onto the patches. So right here on the right now, you, this is kind of just to show us that we're, we have something working. So we, we've got this aspect showing. Um, now we're going to make it snow. So this is the step function. So this gets called every, every tick of the model. Uh, and it, every tick, we're, the most important part is every tick we're going to add 0.01 meters of snow to our patches, which started with no snow. Oh, true. Oh, sorry. It, which started with no snow. And then uh, the next step is we're going to add the logic for an avalanche. So basically, the logic says if your snow depth is bigger than your maximum snow depth, which is based on your slope, uh, which is in radians, that's why there's a pi there. Um, flood, give all of your snow to your two downhill neighbors. So basically, it builds up and then it just dumps all of its snow to its two downhill neighbors. And that creates this kind of cool model that sort of, sort of shows avalanche. Um, so we're gonna take that model, which may or not be, be accurate, probably not, and it, uh, we're gonna put it on a 3D view. So basically, I commented out this the little draw code and put in this three draw code and now I have a, oh, five minutes. 
Uh, now I have a, like a 3D view of the same model. And then we're gonna say, we're gonna comment that out that three code, put in a leaflet draw code. And now we've got the same model on a three, on a leaflet map. Um, so how's this related to education? This, uh, these slides show a class called Geopathways to GIS, I think. Is that what it's called, Yes. Yeah. And uh, it was taught in uh, Northern New Mexico Community College in Española. And what, they got to fly drones and collect data. They used uh, QGIS and Python mostly. And then they ran some simulations. Oops, I did it again. Uh, they ran some simulations using uh, agent script. We would like to get them writing agent script, but uh, honestly, the library wasn't quite there to teach them that this year, but it's a, it's a grant that's going for a couple years, so we're working on it still. And then uh, I've got a video if we have time. So this video shows... Um, we're showing a flood model to some members of a community that were just recently impacted by a fire. And they, after a fire, you have a lot of flooding issues. So this guy on the right, you can't hear him, but he's, telling, he's saying, this flood's gonna go right down here through your yards. Like you need to, whatever, open up your, your gates so that the flood can go into your fields because like otherwise it might get too bad. Uh, he's kind of explaining some technical stuff about farming, I don't understand, but um, yeah, it's kind of, an, so what we're doing is just showing them this table, and what, what we like to say is like the table has some intelligence, but most of the intelligence is actually standing around talking, like these people, they know their land, they, they uh, you know, they know what to do, um, anyways, conclusions, um, so yeah, uh, we have some future work to do. We'd like to import uh, more cloud native data. I, we've, we've learned a lot about that in this conference. Um, right now we just kinda, we can import open street maps and uh, some digital elevation models and a little bit of land cover, but we, there's, I mean, there's a lot of data out there that we could use. Um, we'd also like to you know, integrate our models more into our products. But yeah, maybe create some more models. Oh yeah, we have an IDE that we're working on. It's not very good yet, but you can see it on the right here. It's, a, it's also on agentscript.org. Um, and you can, you guys are welcome to play with it if you want. And uh, here's our team. Um, thank you very much.